Betty, Betty, Betty. Hey everyone. <clears throat> Let's get some tea. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Anna, and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing Betty Crocker's Bisquick Cookbook, 157 Recipes and Ideas from Betty Crocker of General Mills. And there's Betty herself. This book was published in 1956, and I do believe it is a promotional item. It's a very small, thin type of booklet, but I do love that they have the 1956 Bisquick packaging on the back. I absolutely love it when these promotional cookbooks have packaging from that era on them somewhere. It's just it's just neat to see what it looked like back then. One of the things I noticed in my initial look through, I noticed that they have a baked meat sandwich. I do believe that it is the same or similar to the baked meat sandwich that I made. Known in Italy as cavazzone, a treat by either name. One pound ground pork, onion, Swiss cheese, Parmesan cheese, egg, Tabasco sauce, salt, and minced parsley. I think that was very, very similar to the one I made. You could swap out the ground pork for ground beef, which is what I did. But right there is the recipe. Look at that. It was a very, very good dish. I really enjoyed it. So the first two pages of this book have your basic Bisquick recipes on them. You know, your biscuits, your shortcake, your muffins, your coffee cake. Oh, I loved this quote from Betty Crocker herself at the top of this page. You do so many nice special things for the family more often because you start so far ahead with Bisquick. Bisquick is gonna make you the perfect wife, the perfect mother. You're gonna be so far ahead that you can do even more. <laughs> Betty says you can do it. Oh, I loved this description for these main dishes. Big hearted dishes, bright and cheerful. Big hearted dishes makes me think like comfort food. And this is pretty comforting. It's chicken pot pie, salmon rabbit pie. I think that just means it's salmon and cheese. There's no rabbit in it. <laughs> Favorite pork and dumplings, corn and shrimp casserole. Like these are, these are nice hearty meals. And these little drawings, they're very cute. They're kind of in a different color tone depending on the page. So this one has like green. This one is kind of an orangey red. For brunch or coffee clutch, company's coming. Donuts, breakfast ring. Ooh, I would go to that coffee meeting. My goodness, Swedish pancakes. You can make Swedish pancakes from Bisquick? I didn't know that. I love those things. Oh, there was another recipe in here that I was like, you can make that with Bisquick? Bisquick noodles. I have never in my life thought of making noodles out of Bisquick, but it's Bisquick, egg, the end. Okay, so basically you can do this with flour too. They're just telling you to use Bisquick. I wonder what the difference is. I should really try to do one with flour and egg, one with Bisquick and egg, and see if there's an actual difference between them. Oh wow, look at this. <laughs> this chicken is making chicken griddle cakes. <laughs> It's so cute, it has an apron. Whole page of cookies in here. I've never made cookies from Bisquick either, but they have chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter cookies, pudding cookies. Hmm. Pudding cookies are Bisquick, instant pudding, cooking oil, and egg. That seems really easy, I'll have to try those. Have you tried any cookies specifically made out of Bisquick mix? Let me know how that went for you. I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Just really vibrant, really beautiful. I guess they're photographs? Okay, photography, illustration, buff. So are these photographs, are they something else? Because they almost look like I don't know, drawings, something else. Again, we've got this like beautiful spread. We've got corn dogs, of course. Looks like that's maybe a strawberry pie. But yeah, I, I don't know what it's called when the photographs or illustrations or whatever have this kind of look. And it's really hard for me to describe. I know I'm not doing a great job. I just spotted, I'm pretty sure that that's a blue Pyrex bowl on the back, which I love. Flavor tops. Serve them hot and tasty, sitting pretty on the salad plate. I still don't know what they are. <laughs> it's got pimento, parsley, onion, butter, and cream cheese. So that's just something that you mix together and then you put it on top of a batch of unbaked biscuits and then you bake them. So it kind of like sinks in and makes a nice crust. That sounds like it would be good. I like the name too, Flavor Tops. It sounds like an old group from the 60s. Ladies and gentlemen, the Flavor Tops. Wuffins? <laughs> or Wuffins. You make a regular batch of Bisquick muffins, but then you fold in some Wheaties, hence the name Wuffins. Wuffins. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Celery crescents, I don't think so. Is there celery in this? Cause it sounds like no. You make biscuits, you brush them with butter, and then you put some celery seeds on top. I would hardly say that that constitutes the name celery crescents. <laughs> Bacon whirls, I like the sound of those. 
Spicy pancakes? Oh, okay, so it's like cinnamon spice. I thought it was gonna be like, put some Tabasco. Pizza boats. I love a pizza boat. Okay, okay, I think that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and share the recipe that I'm going to be preparing today. Today, I am going to be preparing ranch pudding. I've never heard of ranch pudding. It's like a little dessert and it says it makes its own butterscotch sauce as it bakes. So I kind of wonder if this is like an impossible pie kind of thing. If you like impossible pies, you should definitely check out my friend Jim at Jim's Kitch Kitchen. He has a whole playlist of Bisquick impossible pies. This starts with the brown sugar syrup that you put on the bottom of a pan or a casserole dish and then you top it with like your batter that has some dried fruit and things in it. I'm pretty excited about this one. However, I am facing a bit of a dilemma. So this book was published in 1956, right? There used to be a product called Bisquick and a product called New Bisquick. And people liked New Bisquick so much that they switched all Bisquick to New Bisquick. So this recipe is made with like the old version of Bisquick. I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't know if it's, it's gonna be the same. I did try to find some sort of conversion for converting old Bisquick recipes to New Bisquick recipes and I was unsuccessful. So this is gonna be an adventure. We are going to find out together if this recipe is successful. So let's get started. The first step is to put together what will eventually become your butterscotch sauce. So I combined brown sugar, water, and butter in a saucepan. I turned the flame to medium low and gave everything a stir to combine. You can see here that it is just starting to boil. And once it started boiling, I let this go for five minutes. I did keep a really close watch on it though because I definitely didn't want this to boil over. After five minutes, I turned the flame off and very, very carefully poured this into my casserole dish. I gotta say, this was a lot thinner than I expected it to be, but I followed the directions and I guess we'll see if it turns out. With the butterscotch sauce all completed and set aside, let's move on to our batter. With the star of the show, Bisquick. We got a nice fresh box of Bisquick. Let's open her up. I am cutting this recipe in half, so please disregard the size of my measuring cups. Also, I'm getting Bisquick everywhere. I mean, what's new? I feel like they should make Bisquick in sort of like, um, instead of a narrow rectangular box, maybe like a round coffee can kind of thing. I think it would be a lot better for measuring. Or maybe even better, something with a pour spout. Tell me, can you measure Bisquick without making a mess? If you can, let me know in the comments. There we go, that's our Bisquick. Raisins or dates, I am using raisins and dates. Mostly because I still had some dates left over from fruitcakes at Christmas. <laughs> Throw those guys in there. Nuts, I'm using walnuts, again, leftover from fruitcakes. <laughs> and a lot of ingredients left over from those fruitcakes. Milk and brown sugar. Okay, milk, brown sugar. I'm gonna like crumble it a little. And vanilla. I kind of feel like it might've been a better idea to mix the Bisquick, the brown sugar, and the milk first. But what do I know? Betty knows best. Let's get in there with a whisk and see how it goes. It's, you know, I think spatula time has come. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. All right, so we're gonna go in with a spatula. I think it's just gonna go a little bit more smoothly, and it is. I don't know what I was thinking with that whisk. We have a very fruity, nutty mixture here. Kind of feels and smells a little autumnal. Today I am using a butter print bowl. I love butter print. I don't use these bowls very often. Butter print is kind of one of those in-demand Pyrex designs and the prices are just going up and up and up. So I try to be very careful with the ones I have, but I thought today, why not? Let's get one out and use it. I think this batter looks pretty darn good. Spoon batter on top of sugar mixture. Okay, I'm trying to be super careful here because I have a feeling it's very hot. It did not make much of a syrup, so it's really liquidy. I don't know if it was supposed to make a syrup, but I did what it said. So here goes. Spooning the batter. I'm gonna do it very carefully because I don't want this to splash. It has a very maple oatmeal smell to it, so very much makes me think of fall and winter. She doesn't look like much. I don't even want to tip it because it's very liquidy, but I'm hoping this turns into something beautiful. Goes into a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. <laughs> Ba 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 
Here is our ranch pudding. I was a little skeptical at first. It didn't look like it was doing what it was supposed to, but it did. The batter kind of baked and spread out. It, it's still pretty like liquidy, so I'm not really sure about the texture on this one, but it does smell amazing. I had to let this cool for a really long time because when it came out of the oven, it was bubbling like molten lava, and, and I just thought it would be more like a cake that you could like cut into squares or wedges or something, but I think this is maybe like a scoop kind of thing, and I'm wondering if this is gonna be like a bread pudding. It's kind of what it looks like, actually. You're supposed to serve it warm it says you can serve it plain or you can serve it with whipped cream i'm going for plain today because i just want to sort of taste it in its most natural form so i'm going to scoop a little out here yeah it feels like bread pudding oh my gosh there's so much sauce i scooped a little out and like sauce replaced it right there where i took the stuff out oh my gosh okay yeah, the sauce, when I first put it in the dish, it seemed really thin too, so that made me nervous. It, it feels a lot like bread pudding with, with like a caramel sauce over it. I feel like I should have gotten a non-slotted spoon to get more of this, wow. I am liking this so far, but what really matters is how it tastes, so here we go. Ooh, it's, it's pretty soft. Mmm. Oh wow, it's not like bread pudding. What is this? It's really good, it tastes amazing. Especially if you like caramel or butterscotch or like burnt sugar, this is gonna be for you. What is this like? I'm gonna try another bite and sort of figure this out. I feel like there's something that I've tasted that's kind of like this. Mmm, I love this. I don't even understand, this is so good. I didn't think it was gonna be bad, but like I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. I can't stop. What are you? The texture is maybe kind of like a hot fudge cake with like the fudge sauce only. It's more of a brown sugary, nutty, fruity cake <laughs> with like a butterscotch sauce. It is so dang good. You have to try this. This is amazing. I didn't think it would work. I really wasn't sure because the formulation of Bisquick today is different from the formula back in 1956. So I was a little bit worried, but it, I think it worked. If this is what it's supposed to be like, it worked. Even if this is not what it's supposed to be like, I like how it is. <laughs> so I am a fan. Oh, that is so good. And you could really mix up like the fruits and the nuts in here. I'm making this again. I love it. I think this was successful and I am really excited about it. I cooked a recipe from Betty Crocker's Bisquick Cookbook, and it was really, really good. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos week after week. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. I post content like this every single week. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.